I know exactly how frustrating it is to deal with Joy-Con drift on your Nintendo Switch. You don't even touch the thumbsticks on them, but you just keep on walking into danger until it's game over. Oh sure, you can go out and buy a replacement set of Joy-Cons, but it won't be long before they have the same drift problems that your original Joy-Cons had. Fortunately, the fine folks over at Gullicate have created these Hall Effect thumbsticks for the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons to solve this problem. Let me show you how to set up these thumbsticks in your own Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons to eliminate drift once and for all. It's worth mentioning here as we get started, you should check the calibration settings on your Joy-Cons before you assume that mechanical failure of the Joy-Con itself is what's at fault for the drift. In the case of this right Joy-Con, I attempted to calibrate it using the system software. However, when I push the Joy-Con to the left and release it, you'll see that the Joy-Con starts to drift downward. Definitely a failure of the mechanical thumbstick here, so let's get this taken care of. By the way, when I told my wife Angie we were finally fixing the Joy-Cons, she even jumped in and lent a hand. Happy wife, happy life. These Hall Effect replacement thumbsticks are actually a complete install kit. It has everything in the set that you need to install the thumbsticks. This includes a tri-wing screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a spudger and a pair of tweezers in the tool set, an optional pair of thumb pads for the thumbsticks, brand new Hall Effect thumbsticks, one for each Joy-Con, and a set of replacement screws just in case you find that you need them along the way. We'll cover the installation of the thumbsticks into both the right and the left Joy-Con in this video, starting with the right Joy-Con. Remove the four screws holding the back plate onto the Joy-Con. Be sure to separate out the screws in each part of the disassembly process, as they're not only differentiated by tri-wing and Phillips head, but by size. With the back plate screws removed, use a spudger to get in between the two halves of the Joy-Con outer shell. To access the inside of the Joy-Con, flip the two halves of the outer shell over like you're opening a book. Leave the two halves of the shell connected in this manner, or it will be more difficult to complete the reassembly process moving forward. Grab the tweezers out of the supplied toolkit. Use them to disconnect the two wires that run from the battery to the switch motherboard. Once you have them disconnected, you can remove the battery from inside the Joy-Con case. For the right Joy-Con, there are two Phillips head screws holding the mid-frame in place. Remove both of these screws with the provided Phillips head screwdriver. With the screws removed, you'll be able to flip this mid-frame out of the way. In the case of the right Joy-Con, leave the mid-frame attached by the ribbon cable. Store these screws separately from the screws you remove from the outer shell of the Joy-Con. The last thing that you'll need to remove from the right Joy-Con is the thumbstick assembly itself. First, remove the two Phillips head screws that hold the base of the thumbstick housing to the inside of the Joy-Con. Continue to be diligent by keeping the screws separated from the other screws you remove from the Joy-Con. There's a single ribbon cable that connects the signals from the thumbstick to the motherboard inside the Joy-Con. You can use either a fingernail or a set of tweezers to lift the bale that holds this ribbon down to the motherboard in place. Then slide the ribbon cable and the thumbstick assembly out of the Joy-Con. Insert the new Hall Effect thumbstick into the Joy-Con housing. Make sure to orient the ribbon cable in exactly the same orientation as the thumbstick that you previously removed. Locate the lifted bale on the motherboard. You can use either a finger, or in this case a set of tweezers, to grab the ribbon cable that comes off the new thumbstick, insert it into the slot on the motherboard, and then push the bale down either with the tweezers or with a finger to lock the ribbon in place. Grab the two screws you removed from the old thumbstick, then use them to secure the new Hall Effect thumbstick to the Joy-Con housing. To reinstall the midframe, just make sure it's still connected to the Joy-Con by the ribbon cable, then flip it back into place. Grab the two screws you removed from the midframe and use them to secure the midframe back in place in the Joy-Con housing. Place the battery back into the inner shell, then use a pair of tweezers or your fingers to reconnect the power leads from the battery back to the Joy-Con motherboard. When you flip the back half of the shell back onto the top half of the shell, make sure you don't pinch any of the ribbon cables or wiring when you do so. Once you have the two halves of the shell connected correctly, Secure them together with the four tri-wing screws that you removed from the housing during the initial disassembly process. And as my dad used to say, just keep tightening until you feel the plastic crack. Okay, maybe don't go that far with them. Just hand tight should be more than enough. Awesome, now that you've got the left Joy-Con done, let's tackle the right Joy-Con. There are a few unique differences between the left Joy-Con and the right Joy-Con, but taking out the screws out of the back cover isn't one of them. Use the tri-wing screwdriver to take out those four screws just like you did with the right Joy-Con. Good organization still applies here with the left Joy-Con, so be sure to organize and separate the four tri-wing screws. Once you have these four screws secured, once again use a spudger, the pry tool that came in the toolkit, to pry the two halves of the Joy-Con open. Remember, don't tug at these as you open them up, just fold them open like you're opening up a book. 
Just like you did with the right Joy-Con, use the included tweezers to disconnect the power lead that goes from the battery to the Joy-Con motherboard. Once you have this lead disconnected, remove the battery from the inner housing. Be sure to pay extra careful attention here because this is important. This is one of the key differences between the right Joy-Con and the left Joy-Con. The left Joy-Con actually has three Phillips head screws that need to be removed for the mid-frame to come out. Don't forget to secure those mid-frame screws separately to keep things well organized. It's still good practice to roll the mid-frame out of the inside of the Joy-Con to protect the small ribbon cable that attaches it. But instead of leaving it connected, this time you'll need to lift the veil that attaches it to the inside of the Joy-Con and remove the mid-frame completely to get access to the screws that hold the thumbstick in place. Here's another thing that's unique to the left Joy-Con. There are actually two veils and two ribbon cables to be removed here. The first one is the ribbon cable that comes out of the housing of the thumbstick. The other one is a ribbon cable that sits on the motherboard and it just needs to be removed to give you access to the screws that connect the thumbstick to the motherboard. Once you have these disconnected, you can come in with the Phillips screwdriver provided in the toolkit and remove the two screws holding the thumbstick assembly into the housing of the Joy-Con. Then you can lift the newly freed thumbstick assembly out of the Joy-Con housing. I want to point out something important here. Once you remove the thumbstick, there's actually a trim ring on the left Joy-Con in this hole right here that does not exist on the right Joy-Con. Be sure to keep it in place and keep it aligned before proceeding. So this isn't likely to be revelatory or anything. Reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. Start by putting the replacement Hall Effect thumbstick in place in the housing, being certain, of course, that the orientation of the ribbon cable matches the orientation of the thumbstick you remove. Then screw the Hall Effect thumbstick in place using the screws you removed from the original thumbstick in the Joy-Con. Resecure the ribbon cable that you removed in order to get access to the screws for the thumbstick housing. Be sure to push the bail down to lock the ribbon in place. Then insert the ribbon from the newly installed thumbstick into the slot on the motherboard and push the bail down to lock the ribbon in place. To resecure the mid-frame into the Joy-Con housing first, reattach the ribbon cable to the Joy-Con housing area and then press the bail down to lock it in place. Then you can roll the mid-frame back into the Joy-Con housing. Secure the mid-frame into the Joy-Con housing by replacing the same three screws you originally removed. Place the battery back in the Joy-Con shell, then use the supplied pair of tweezers to reattach the leads from the battery back to the Joy-Con motherboard. Reconnect the two halves of the Joy-Con shell together, and again, be sure not to pinch any of the ribbon cables or wiring during the process. Then re-secure everything in place with the same four tri-wing screws that you originally took out to take this whole thing apart. The replacement job's done, but we still need to calibrate these two Joy-Cons for them to work correctly. Out of the box, the Hall Effect joystick in the right Joy-Con was out of calibration up and to the left. This problem is easily solved by running the calibration process in the Nintendo Switch's settings. A simple press in each of the four main directions, along with three circles with the newly installed Hall Effect joystick, and the calibration process is complete. And now the newly installed Hall Effect joystick is calibrated right on the money. And about that left Hall Effect thumbstick, it happened to be calibrated right on the money, right out of the box. But don't hesitate to run the calibration process on your newly installed Hall Effect thumbsticks as needed. Now that your Joy-Cons are ready to go, did you know that you can play your favorite Switch games on your PC using those very same Joy-Con? Learn how to use the Yuzu emulator to play your favorite Switch games on your PC with this video shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment.